<laughs> G'day Paul, g'day Brent, how are you guys? Probably a little bit slow to react today, five minutes late there, sorry about that guys. Uh, welcome to Trade Setup and the live stream for the 24th of the 7th. So I just had my computer in the background going, showing the stream, so just muted that. All right to go. How are we all today? Hope we're doing well. This market, uh, same as last week, started off the week a bit weak, so it's just trading back down to that support zone. Uh, we'll take a look at the charts a bit later on. Um, we'll also go a few, uh, through a few of the overseas markets just to have a look to see if anything's changed over there, which I don't think they have. The S&P is still... The last week's either been up or sideways uh, or, or down very slightly, but it's had a couple of good up days last week, finished in a positive note. Um, sorry, finished up for the week on a slightly negative note, but close to break even. Um, what else? We'll go through a few trades, what we got, what we got running. Um, what I wanted to focus on, just having a look at it today, uh, just the, the, important, the importance of confirmation uh, for your entries. Uh, I've just got a only a couple of examples. I'll go through and see if we can pull out a few more as we go. Uh, but there's one that I've been chatting with somebody about uh, on Mesoblast. Just want to have a quick look at that and the importance of taking it at the right time, like we've discussed before on with anchors. Um, you know, when it breaks particular levels, waiting for a different style of setup. And we've got one now that I've got an em entry alerted on it, except it's looking like it's going to go the wrong way. So, I mean, it doesn't mean anything if it goes down and, and hits a, a, what would have been the stop level. Uh, we're just cancelling that order anyway. So it's just the importance of what, you know, planning out a trade, I guess, and, and seeing what sort of thing you want to play out for your entry and sticking to it, just to give you that little bit extra confirmation. All right. What we'll do now is just take a look at where the market's at. Oh, sorry, for anyone that's new, anyone that's listening in for the first time or... Um, even, I guess, people that have been around for a while. On the top left-hand corner, you'll see Trade Setup. That's our Twitter site, you know, Twitter feed there. Top right is the Facebook. Uh, down the bottom right-hand corner, if you subscribe to us on YouTube, you'll also get an alert uh, just from YouTube saying we're up and running. And also, just to reiterate, our general advice warning on there, you can see on the screen just there, we don't give personal advice. So what we're discussing is just really views and opinions. So that's the, the meat of it all. All right. Where are we at the moment? Down 56. Actually, I'll get my face up there. I know how much you like it. There we go. That's a bit better. Alrighty, so ASX is down 56 at the moment. Uh, it's taken a bit of a beating on now. Well, now, at the moment. The last few days, it's just struggling. And to be quite honest, I'm not too keen on this type of price action um, we'll just discuss that in a second let's see everyone's view on the old ASX at the moment it's just showing a few signs it's just struggling I mean you, you you seem to be see those lower highs if we just drill in let's get in on it a bit closer XJO whoops that's not what we want is it Maybe we'll drill in on that a bit more. Okay, we can see just around here. All right, that's probably, so excuse me, there's a bit clearer that one there. We'll draw it up, screen snap. So we've discussed this time and time again. It just looks like it's, I, I just get the feeling the ASX is just trying to anticipate the US selling off. And you know, every time it pops back up, they go to new highs, we just sort of rebound a bit off this support zone. Uh, it's, but e either way, it's just looking like it's it's got more weakness than anything else. You've got a level through here. It's more that 56, you know, this sort of zone through here as well. So just in here, we're getting those lower highs. So it's just pushing down. So we could easily get that bit of a flush out of that zone. Maybe trade down to 56. Maybe retest this support down here at 56. Maybe even flush out that major zone through there as well. Um, and then start to build for a new, a new move higher. We've got similar top of, well, not a similar top of thing, but we've got that similar pattern there. That was back when um, Trump, the election, you know, selling off into election. So any 
any sort of bad news had the market down. We've got that lower high in here. It pretty much just touched down on the anchor level. So this was, at the time, was the key anchor level for this move up. Pretty much retested that, and bang, up she goes. So whether we're going to this you'd probably say is, is the anchor level around that 56, maybe retest there. It doesn't matter too much. I mean, it doesn't mean it's going to hold up because it did previously. And that's the leg up, and that was the previous leg up. We could easily just, you know, get this type of action. We've pushed down. We're struggling like we are here. We might push down, and then, you know, you've got one, two action legs down, one, two, and then start holding a higher low to work our way up. That's what it looks like that could be the play. Um... I'm not overly negative. I was hoping that it would just rebound off this and we start taking out some of these highs at 58, is it? And start working our way up to that 6,000 mark. But at the moment, just looking to touch weak. <laughs> I'll remember that. I'll bring, you, I'll bring you up to date on that. I know if, if I forget about it and I don't hear about it, you're probably wrong, Paul. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll hear about it. Yeah, but the thing is, what you're doing with holding in cash, it doesn't matter because the ASX is not looking that great. The, the US could keep going up, um, and holding in cash is not such a bad thing with the, the US at all time highs. But um, like we always say, we just trade what we see, and we are. This could turn out to be, you know, on the ASX. Let me just get back to weekly. Oh, that is the weekly. Sorry, I wanted to show you the daily. That's the price action I was really trying to show. I didn't realize I was on a weekly. But anyway, you can see it's probably a bit clearer through here. That support level through down 56, what it's touched, it's just struggling up at this you know, 56.50 with these lower highs pressing down into the market. So every time we've, we've had a bit of a push out, we did break that 58, which I thought was going to start leading to some higher lows, and up we go to at least retest 6,000. Um, touch up on that. But it's looking like it's could, it may take a deeper correction. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah. Early August, look, anything can happen. I'd like to see it uh, move up and at least touch that 6,000. But like I said, if that's just a correction, it's just a correction on a weekly chart, corrective action, and then we build for another leg higher. So be it. But the Dow needs to, I think the Dow and the US is the one that everyone's expecting it to correct, and it's just not happening at the moment. Let's take a look at those. I mean, look at that. Still, it is extended by everyone's terms. It's That leg up there is sort of the most recent leg higher. You know, technically, there's no reason why it can't go higher. Um, keep grinding higher. You could have said it was over overboard up here. You know, same type of scenario back in 2014, and still keep drifting higher. Another thousand, couple of thousand points. So the same thing could happen. Uh, that's what we say. Just um, anticipation shouldn't be part of your game, I guess. Uh, trade what you see. I mean, if we're wrong, we're wrong. Uh, we jump some, jump into some short positions and see how we go on those. That's the Dow, the S&P. Well, we're in the S&P. Still the same type of thing. That was a, a nice, meaty correction. That's what I like about that. To, through 2015, started, really struggled, big sell-off, bounced back that lower high, washed out that low. But you sort of come back and down to that key level just above 1,800. That's on the S&P. And then we sort of retested that, rejected that, and that led to the new leg higher. Um, that was nice through there. That was mid-2016. Oh, Oh, sorry, I don't know what that could be, Brent. All right, didn't miss too much. <laughs> all right, we've got the FTSE. All these markets are starting to look extended, obviously, but who knows? I mean, when they're extended, this is where people start to get caught anticipating. But and if you're in cash now, it's one of those tough things. You want to pick very solid shorter-term trades. I would anyway, this, the way I would view it, because the, the more extended we are on the ASX or the overall markets, the less likely I'm going to take a, a lower probability trade. And I want to exactly define my entries, my exits, and be, and not just let them run as such, uh, especially on buy side. On the short side, you can, um, because still some of the, some on the short side are going quite well. We've got a couple going now. Still Telstra is going well. I'm taking a partial on that. And what was the other one? Coke, which up about 4 to 5% on that one, on that short. So, I mean, even though the market's not doing too much, having those shorts on is always is always good taking something and putting it in the bank. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, if you're on the long side, just be a bit more active, a bit more risk adverse in an extended market. When the markets say, um, what are we now? This is the DAX. But if you're trading around here, 
and well, look, we can easily, I guess you can draw that. You can see that you know the market's moved down, so you can see it's contracting lower. We built this high low, and by the time it pushed up through these highs and, and this part here, great time to buy, great opportunity. You can probably be a bit more lax on your risk, um, have a bit wider because you know that that's potentially going to trade up to this high, uh, and it did. It traded through that high, so you've got a lot of room to move on the AS on the, the actual index. Uh, so in that respect, you can have, I wouldn't say lower probability trades. It's always better to pick higher probability trades. Um, but there's some when the market's going up, it generally lifts a lot of things across the board. But when it's extended, it's the quality trades that are going to perform. It still potentially could perform. They could even perform when the market's rolling over, but uh, we'll see how it plays out. I hope that's a long-winded bit of a <laughs> rant. I like the old rants. Uh, where are we at the moment? So... Currencies are going well. There's not much to talk about. If you want to talk about currencies, just give us a yell. We've got a few on the on the boil at the moment that we we haven't. Like I said, we're not particularly doing alerts on them. Uh, we are doing that uh, weekly FX review on the Wednesday, so I'll, I'll probably do another video this Wednesday of just what we think is going to have potential to move up or down. Um, at the moment, we're sort of biased long on about four out of five. Biased down on I think one of them, and they're, they're all going quite well. Uh, the Euro's just kicked on. The Euro's had some cracking setups. Uh, if you're watching it intraday on a shorter time frame for the entries, looking really, really good. So if you want to chat about those, let me know. We can talk about it next time on Thursday anyway. Um, but any questions on just what we discussed, the overall market? Of course, the overall market, we, anything could happen at the moment. We we want some sort of direction. I'd Like I said, I'd like to see... Uh, if we go back to that daily... And ideally, with this kind of negative action, we just go back. I didn't do it, did I? Six months, let's just take the year. On this type of negative price action, I want to see something a bit more definitive, a bit clearer to really think. Because, I mean, there is potential when you're, if you're looking for your longs, they could turn out well and then start off all right look great perfect great setup but the market's negative and they just roll over and stop you out so there is the chance of that of course so if that's the key level and we're just potentially we've got down to 5600 it could extend down to there wash that out wash out that low and then pop back up i want to be working off the high low you know so we've got this type of price action it's just struggling to make highs if we get down to here that's 56 then i want to see something happen here yeah, off a, off a higher low. So we know that we're, we've are we retested a low, so we've got a double bottom, we call it a retest fail, and then you're looking on the right-hand side, you're looking for that um, higher low to work off. And that way you're in early, so if you start, if you've got something on the ball, you like some setups, ideally I'd like to see that, or rather than not even push down here, but start working off that support there and popping up through that 57.75, push it up through 57.75, and then we build that higher low, great. I think same sort of scenario, but if we push down, I'd just be sort of edging away for too many longs just at the moment just to see what happens. But you never know. Like I said before, if they turn out, if they look good, it's not, it can't hurt trading them. you just got to be a bit more risk adverse, tight, tight risk. You know exactly where your risk is and manage it a bit tighter. All right, let's get into... Oh, we are tipping over a bit, aren't we? 58 points. Down 58 at the moment. Now, I wanted to chat about, oh, it's probably a good time to talk about it too, your, your entries, especially at this time. Um, why it's important to get good solid entry entry levels um, and waiting for that, you know, the, your final piece to your puzzle is always the entry setup. You can have, I've seen a lot of people put up some ideas um, in the stream. Great. I think a lot of you actually really are getting the hang of, say, the price action and the price structure. It's always good. I mean, even if you're a fundamentalist, it's good to have a, a, a fairly solid background and some technicals just to see. I think it helps refine your entries more than anything else. Um, I use purely, not purely, but I do read a bit a bit here and there, but not, not as much as most um, about the fundamentals. I use purely technicals, but I've got to the stage where I really, I know what I want to see and it always helps. Yeah, yeah, no, I did, Paul. Receive those. I sort of, I, I'm not too bearish on the banks to be honest i'll go through those maybe we can go through those now i'll go through those in a second we'll go through those a bit later on just have a look at those banks um 
see how easy I am to be distracted? <laughs> I've already forgotten what I was just talking about. Uh, setups. Yeah, it's important just to know, um, you know, with your technical analysis, exactly what you want to see, not just buying it, because I know some people put a, we call it a, a sitting limit order. You know, it's come down to support. They just put a, a limit order. For, if it gets down to support, trades into support, just put a limit order. It just sits in the market and then they, they execute their order. Sometimes it works. <laughs> I've got a coffee all the time there, Paul, every time I sit in the stream. It's about my third for the day. Had a nice little swim this morning, so third coffee, all right to go. So yeah, when we when we talk about a sitting, if you, let me get up this, a sitting limit order would be just sitting in here prior to that. So someone, for instance, if this is a stock, uh, it just pushes down to that support. So they're expecting, okay, I want to see a retest of 5,600. So they could potentially just put a, a limit order, bang, at 56.25, put their risk at 55.75, so 50 point risk. But the market's going to trigger as soon as it trades that level. I don't like doing that because there's no reason why this market, we haven't got confirmation at all that that's, that's going, that level's going to hold up. And I think a lot of people get caught doing that. I mean, when you're sitting there, you're putting your support resistance lines, that's all great. But that's, that's really the planning out of the market. It's not your final step. That's building your trade, building what you want to see, uh, building your price action. Okay, I think it's going to test down there. But then your last piece of the puzzle, and it should always be your last piece of the puzzle, is your entry level. And it should always happen after you see, you know, after the fact. So our entry level particularly would be if we got this type of price action after the retest, rather than sitting here, um, we want to see these high lows, and then we want to see a break. So that's, for me, is confirmation this market's heading higher. And then I'm happy to buy that. I'm seeing my higher lows. I've got confirmation. I mean, in hindsight, that would have been a better order. You know, that's turned out quite well. But there's no reason why this can't be pushing down. You potentially got that higher low here and then just rolls over from there. He gets stopped out. I don't get in. Um, that's ideally what I'm always looking for. And I think it's a great way to re just refine your entries. Um, we mentioned that way back here. When you see, if you were sitting on the bid here, I mean, I know it turned out well. There's times when it's just not going to turn out well. Um, if you were sitting down here, it works great. But that was, even though it was a long way up off that support zone, that for me was a great little entry. You know exactly where your risk is too. It's easy to define. You're not, and that's part of, a big part of your trading is um, knowing exactly where your risk is if you're wrong. And it's not, when I say that, I don't, I don't mean by, your risk has to be associated with the price action, not a dollar value. Um, does that make sense to everyone there? I guess everyone who's been here listening for a while, it does. But when I say a dollar value, if your risk is typically 500 bucks all the time, or maybe $1,000. So if I was buying, say this was a stock, it's buying off support, I wanted to have a risk of $1,000. Um, that $1,000 has to put my risk, or well, for me anyway, below a higher low. I don't want that $1,000 to put, you know, I do a certain quantity, whatever quantity you do of the trade, but that risk say, okay, if it pulls back to here, that's my $1,000 lost, um, I'm out. And, and that's, but the problem is that's right smack in the middle of that high low. And it could easily pop up, get you in, come back, stop you out, hold trend, and then go higher. So I think it's always important to have your, that's where my risk is, and then work out what, um, you, how many shares you're going to do or what's the number that you want to enter with. I'm hoping that, that all makes sense. Um, but yeah, I always like to have that higher low there. All right, any questions, shoot them through. We'll have another sip of my coffee. I hope you're enjoying your coffee, Paul. Mine's instant, which is <laughs> I'll get used to. All right. So one that on that topic, we're always looking for, generally been listening for a while, we're always looking for longs. We're looking for a high low. I want to see, and that for me is just evidence for shorts. Uh, we'd, we want to look for that lower high to play out. Uh, ideally, you've got one just in here. If you're going to go short at the moment, you know, the market's pushed down, it's popped back up. That's a major. So if you're looking at this stage, that's a major potential lower high. You've got another lower high. So that sort of is confirmation of that major lower high. And then sell it through here. Your risk is up here. Away you go. So that's on the short side, that lower high on the short side. And the reverse, say, this here on the long side. So that's... <laughs> I can't hear you anyway, Paul, so that's fine. I hope you're listening when we talk about the banks, that's all. Um, so that's pretty much the crux of my trading. I mean, this, what we're doing here is just setting up the trade. So if we go to what we're talking about, as an example, 
Mezzo Blast was one that we start off with a weekly. Was one that I didn't mind, and we'll draw this up bit by bit, just so to see if it can make sense to everyone. Um, no, that's not what I want to do. That, that one. So this is one we're watching for a while. I had uh, someone was chatting me about this also um, when it spiked up, thinking about buying it. I said, look, it hasn't got confirmation just yet. Uh, what we want to do is just really wait for that confirmation. It's looking good. We've got the early signs of things looking starting to look really nice. And then um, we're getting set to jump in, but we didn't have that confirmation. So this is pretty much the context for the trade. You know, this is, if anyone's watched for a while, this is what we do time and time again. You've had a really good pullback to that dollar. We've had that little lift. It's come back down, retested, and then it started building. And it built, and it's looking like with this move here, up to this high of, say, 325, it's a great early sign that this is, it's on a weekly basis, don't forget, it's starting to bust up, up out of contraction. So that's your contraction low. We're starting to lift, so we're looking for that high low. So that was the basis on a on a weekly basis. That was the basis for the trade. And don't forget too, we got the stochastics are in that oversold. We can't get down to a dollar. We're we're seen to be holding up around two. So on a weekly basis, our weekly charts are telling us good zone. So then next step is just to drill down on the daily. So drilling down on the daily charts. Again, this is that same zone. We'll just drill in on that. Did that work all right? Yep, I think so. So this is the daily chart. All right, so we know what we're looking for. That's the high after spike out, you know, out of contraction, whatever that, I won't even draw that in, but you get the idea here. The market's contracting low. With this push up, we're starting to push out of, um, out of contraction on the weekly, so we're looking for that entry. Now this was looking, to me, it wasn't looking too bad. I mean, I was, I was looking at this, so I thought, okay, We've got this push down, it's popped back up, and there's only these minor levels, okay? It's popped back up, it's come back down and retested just below that low, so just below $2. Started to get choppy, then we got this little minor uh, higher low. It's only a minor level, okay? Then we, we got this push up. So what I was expecting at that time, um, on this green candle, someone asked, actually asked me, are you going to buy Mesoblast? I said, no, because the key level for me is at 2.30. I want to see it break up at a 2.30, and if we break up at a 2.30, what we got on top of that weekly structure of this potentially being a weekly higher low, we're starting to get signs that it is also a daily higher low. Okay, does that make sense there? So we've got two, I guess, two things lining up for us. But what I wanted to see from here was really just that um, higher low off this support, off $2, you got that little push up through your, your, your anchor level at say 2.30. So I wanted to see that push up. I wanted to see something like this off a high low. Then I'd be happy to buy that. The thing is, and that was the last piece to a puzzle, like I said, trying to get that uh, piece. I would have liked to see a bit more contraction in the MAs, which, as, as we know, it didn't play out that way. We'd like to have seen a bit of contraction. I think if we get this type of style, we'll start getting con um, that contraction in the MAs, the MAs coming together, which is a good sign also of um, buyers starting to step up to the plate, especially after this break out of that uh, 230, that push up, and then that pullback. Um as it, as it was, it didn't play it that way. So that's why I feel it's very important to know exactly what your what your entry setup is and planning ahead. And as we've seen, it's just I think it was Friday. It busted through that support down there, just washed out the support. So the market sort of washed out the high, and bang, all the way back down. So the, to me, that's not looking too positive. It may have a lot more work to do. That's all. It is in a good zone, um, but what I'd ideally like to see now. So that's our support down here. Let's just say it's it's come all the way back down. I want to see it lift. And then, then again, I'm still looking for that high low. And I think what we'd probably want to see is a bit more work done, a bit more contraction, and then a push up out of the highs. The EMA, it's an EMA pool. Uh, I prefer the, I mean, each to their own. I think SMA, EMA, similar. It's a 20 and a 50. Um, because I think that's a fair bit. You can change that. They're all subjective, but the theory behind it should be the same. You know, when the MA is heading higher, it's a buy. You know, you're looking for that buy. It's maybe a pullback like this one. That was a cracking little entry, actually, on Mesoblast. That, see that entry there? Just prior to that high. So that's, that way there, it's like that reversion to the mean. It's pulled back to the MAs, and then we know that's the zone where it should hold up. The MAs are heading higher. They're starting to expand again. 
but yeah, the theory is pretty much the same. Yeah, I know. I to be honest, I don't know how to change those lines. Let's do this. This might work. That helps, doesn't it? I guess. It just thickens that line. So we've got the twenty and the fifty. So yeah, at this stage here, we didn't. You're not getting that contraction in the MAs and we expected it I expected it to be doing something around like that MA start heading higher contraction then bang up she goes but it didn't happen so that's one example of of um, the entry setup planning ahead we've got all the pieces to our puzzle we know what the weekly was doing that was a weekly potential a great zone for a weekly high low uh, we got that little breakout that spike up all, all happens all the time and that's what we like to see Essentially, we started getting that pullback. It was looking good at that green candle. We were looking like that buyers was going to start stepping and build that daily high low around that 210. Didn't play out, sold off, went sideways and banged straight through support. So for me now, it's it's sort of back to the drawing board on Meso Blast. Meso Blast. Back to the drawing board on that just to see what happens from here. If it can hold up, it's washed out that level. There's no reason why even today, I mean, we haven't finished the day just yet. That's a daily candle. Could easily just be a bit of a washout again of 190 which is a previous low. Uh, but then we have to see that process of seeing that higher lows build. So again, if I'm going to look at that, it has to prove to me. Uh, I feel it's in a good buy zone, both on the weekly and the daily. You can see it's oversold down here. Don't know what the fundamentals are, but it has to prove to me why why it's worthy of buying, I guess. Does that make sense? Now, I want to find something else. Uh, there's two more. That's probably not the best. This is SSM service stream. We've had this before, done well. Um, got a little buy alert on that one. But just waiting to see what happens with that. And I know what I want to see. It's just a matter of seeing it, really. So you've got these, you know, push up, pull back, build a high low, pops up retest the high, pull back, again back to the MAs, and then acceleration higher, then we had a good washout. I mean, that was a massive flush out of any of the long positions. So on that daily candle there, you open up, bang. No, sorry, it opened right up here. So all the way down to 115, who knows why, actually. That would have flushed out a lot of players, especially that bought it in this run up here, expecting that to go higher at this stage. It's just flushed them all out. And then you've consolidated all this consolidation through here, which I like. And you've got these ever so slightly high lows at the building. Maybe that's today. Yeah, we're up today at 135. That Friday price action, uh, okay. It's starting to just look like this could potentially roll over, but I don't mind them. I and if it pushes up through, for me, the confirmation if it pushes up through these highs at, was it 135 and a half? 136. I'm happy to buy that because you can see, especially after what we're seeing, we've got an acceleration high. If we go back down to a weekly, show a bit more data, that's well and truly on its way up. A confirmation to is is like a an inside entry that that's going to be a daily high low, and we're going to target up to at 145 potentially to new highs. So it's not the best example of something when you that goes wrong, but it is it is an important example of why you want to you want to plan out your your entries. I mean, it's not to say that that's going to work. It's going to get me in. It could just roll over from there. Uh, but after all this price action, I want to see some. I want to see it do something first, and then hold up. Buyers are stepping in all through here. Pretty much a good part of a month. Been buying, stepping in, uh, buying it up. It's struggling up at one thirty-five, but sooner or later, there's people like probably like myself. Other people are looking for for gets through that those little highs. Uh, that can easily break up, and away we go. No worries. If FXL could be one. I don't know if that's any good on the weekly. Trying to find another good example of what um, you'd be looking for. Yeah, it doesn't look that great, does it? I can't remember if this is the one we call the short on or not. Anyway. Oh, let's give 
this one as an example, um, up until that capitulation when it got smashed, um, what I'd be looking for here as an example of, you know, your, just your last step, your entry. Let me just see what the weekly looks like again. So I guess it's pretty obvious here. Just look at the month. We've had that big run up. Five bucks. It's contracted lower. At this stage here, there's no reason why this couldn't have been a high low. We've had a lot of flush out of all these buyers through here the last few years. You know, a few years it washed them out. But as an example, that's that's all. This could have been a nice little zone consolidated through there. We've touched down. That could build that high low that we're always looking for uh, on a weekly and a potential daily basis also through here. And then... I'd have a particular entry because I just want that extra confirmation. And don't forget too that markets can easily flush people out uh, on just the washout and then roll over. So my entry would have been back here as a good little example. Let's get rid of that. Is that nice and clear? Yep, that's good enough. That was my key level at this stage. You know, it's all looking quite good. You've got some high lows, you know, high lows probably through here. Well, it's a bit, a bit wonky. Through here, some more high lows through here. So you can see that the price is contracting. It's contracting up with buyers starting to step up to the plate. They got it wrong in the end, but from here, this is my key level. So that 240, I would have ideally like to have seen it pop out, pull back, and then go. I mean, it could easily just go up pop out and then straight up and then you buy it on the rise rather than um, when the market's actually rolling over or buy it on a breakout. You can just buy it when the market's heading higher. So this or this type of price section, and it's it's very important for me to, is to be buying it after we get that little pop out. I mean, there's going to be times when you miss it, um, but it's it's a safe way to say it's not just going to, if we just get our support line, it's not just going to pop up, wash people out, bring me in if I buy it on the break of that level. Because uh, I haven't really seen a high low just yet. We've seen prices creep up with buyers just starting to step up. But we want to see pop up through, then the high low build. Does everyone understand just that slight difference between the two? I mean, we, we are getting those minor high lows, but it's nothing significant. We haven't broken out of the high. So that's a key part of the trading is, you know, we haven't taken out any highs. If we did this type of price action, we have taken out the high, most recent high. So we're starting to put pressure on the sellers. Prior to that, there's no real pressure on the sellers. The buyers are stepping up, but there's still no pressure on the sellers. And of course, what we saw, bang, it capitulated. So if you're buying in here, anticipating that, that breakup, you got caught, you got cleaned up on that move down. But if we know what we want to see, we plan ahead, it's sort of sometimes it can just keep you out of a trade. I mean, there's times when it's not going to work, but it sort of helps you minimize your losses and gets you in a, and gets you in the higher quality trades, higher probability. All right, let's get on to... 35 minutes. Does that make sense why, you know, I think the last piece of the puzzle is always should be your, your entry setup. And you want ideally to see that confirmation of why you should be buying it. All right. How's your coffee going there, Paul? We'll get into some banks. I think the banks are the important ones on the weekly charts. Uh, all right, so these banks, this is ANZ. Let me just go through, get a bit of a... So ANZ, like it's grinding high. You can see this type of price section, edge up, long move down. That was in 2008. Edging its way high to new highs. Good solid move down, 2015 into 2000, beginning of 2016. And we could be just, if that's a similar type of price action, we could be just doing this. It's the same sort of price action replaying itself. If we get this, but so that would have assumed that we're going to get a lot of choppy, you know, choppy price action. Could be the good part of a year. Don't forget this is a monthly chart. Um, looking at the weekly, I don't mind this price action. There is one key point that is getting me concerned about the banks. Uh, probably not not all of the banks. I mean, we'll start one at a time. We'll just do one at a time. ANZ on the weekly, what we see this is your trend higher. So if we're going, or normally what we look for, this is the anchor level. It's broken through the anchor level with a move down. We'll just take that out. So what we what we want to see here, it's pushed up. 
I wouldn't be buying it just here because I wouldn't mind seeing a pullback to build the high low and then potentially getting looking for the entry on the daily charts. I wouldn't just be buying it here on that breakout if you get into the daily because uh, that could easily just be that major lower high and the market's going to roll over and then we could be heading back down to you know, retest that sort of base where it started building through here, produce a new leg up, a breakout through those highs around 26.50. Could easily go down and retest that. And that way you're behind the eight ball if you're buying it here. So if we go down to quickly just look at the daily chart, it's good. similar type of pricing, but there's no reason why on the weekly this is grinding higher. You build a lower high, then you roll over, at least test down to 27.50, even lower, and you get that secondary leg. So that's one leg after breaking this anchor on the weekly. So that's your anchor to the... Your, your weekly trend higher it's broken that we could be in the a weekly lower high we don't know I mean, no one's going to know uh, until it plays out that way but that's the thing that's got me concerned this sort of move down grinds high and then we could have that secondary leg down that we always basically like to look for does that make sense so that's that's anz nab you know similar type of scenario you've got this weekly anchor level through 30 which produced this leg up that's only started to fall over and on a weekly basis, we could have easily on a daily held up around here and did this price action, but above 30. And then you've got, okay, we've got leg up, contraction lower, build an anchor level to the next move higher, pull back, build an anchor level, and then go higher. But the fact that this is below 30, this type of price action could be a similar type of scenario to ANZ, building a weekly lower high and then rolling over. So ideally, you want to see some, and don't forget these MAs that we start to look at, we like to look at. Uh, potentially they're coming together here and we've got that lower high, then it rolls over. You know, I'm not being negative on it, but that's, I want to see a bit more, I guess. Um, there's no reason why I'm in, in saying all that. See how it's had this good sell-off? It's held up about you know, 29. It's broke the anchor, yeah, but it could just be building, building, building. But what we're seeing is, on, especially on this one here, if I draw it up, this is NAB. There's also this, so this one, you know, break the anchor through there, but it's just breaking out of there. So the way you view this, you've got to have it in the back of your mind. What's happening on a weekly basis, okay? If we've broken the anchor on a weekly basis, we could be looking at a major lower high. So what would happen if you're going to buy it, potentially even here? I mean, it's not saying that's not a bad buy. We've broken out through that with this push up to 31. We've broken out of this sort of consolidation through here. So we're probably either going to get a retracement on that weekly, on the daily, sorry, and we're going to build that lower weekly high, but either way, you could have a profitable, profitable trade still, a two to one trade play out, as long as we get our risk. So we might've had that move up to 31, pull back, choppy, and then go. And then you've got your risk. You know where you're placing your risk. You've got a two to one, even if it is the scenario what we said on the weekly basis of that major lower high, because it looks like it's going to contract a bit towards the highs, build the lower high on the weekly, and then roll over. If that's the case, we still got a, a, tra a trade. Does that make sense? But you're also putting yourself the potential this is going to start attacking those highs at 34 because it is the unknown. You've just got to have it in the back of your head what the longer term structure is as well. CBA, you know, it's sort of a bit of the same. Uh, Westpac, they're all they're all looking very much the same, the four big one, the four big banks. Yeah, no worries. Uh, LLC and SMN. We'll look at those. All right, so there's your banks, Paul. <laughs> Pretty much. And I think that's the best. Well, well, that's the way I attack things. I don't like to be, I and mean, like I said before, you know, people say get off the fence. I say get on the fence and, and always look at it from each side of the market. Where Could it go down? Could it go up? I mean, on a weekly basis, this could easily roll over. On a daily, it's going up. So when you've got two conflicting views like that, you just have to remember what's happening on the longer term. No reason why this can't go up, and you're going to be taking a chance that if I'm right and it's a lower high in the weekly, it rolls over, test down towards these lows, and you just want to be out and reassess it. Um, yeah, I don't mind sitting on the fence. <laughs> All righty. It's, it's a bit different to seeing... Uh, what's, I'm just trying to think of another stock. But we'll say this one. This one's in a definite uptrend. It has been for... Oh, not a year. Let's see on the weekly. That weekly's in an uptrend. I mean, that's that's uh, so, oh, soda stream, service stream. It's got higher highs, had a little correction, higher lows, higher lows the whole way along. So that's slightly different to what we've seen with the banks of just breaking the anchors. 
uh, through here. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. It doesn't to me. <laughs> so where we got now, we've got the banks. Uh, who's next on the list? What was next on the list? Was it yours, John? All right, that was. So FXL. Uh, good point. I read that, Dev, so I might just chat about that. RFF. I haven't looked at that. I hope it's going well. It looks good. So Flexi Group, that's, for me, you know, that trend's lower. It hasn't confirmed anything. It's just taken out the lows there on a weekly basis anyway. So for, on a weekly, if that's a bit of a, a pullback there, uh, you retest that low. You want to see on a weekly, that's your level you got to break to change the direction of the market, you know, through 250, if ideally you want to buy it. So that in mind, I mean, there's no reason why you can't buy it here. Your risk could be down below 175. You got this little breakout here, but you got to remember on a weekly, this is just contracting off those lows. So you just, I guess what it means is you got to be fast on your feet. If it does start to roll over and you get that lower high, if we can draw it up here, All these trades, guys, there's no reason why you can't trade it. it. Just It's just remembering what the bigger picture is. You always got to remember what the bigger picture is. What could happen? What's my risk of not playing out? So we've got this one here. You've got a key level up here. This push down broke through, I don't know what level. What's that level? Low of 170, say, which was through here. So that's the recent break wash it out there so we're contracting off those lows um, from here it's just broken up through those highs you risk that's your consolidation through there and starting to push up holding some high lows nice little trade that in itself like that leg up contraction through here we'll get a secondary leg up but then if you are looking at it, that just remembering what the weekly is doing so it can easily just go back pop up and then if you start to see these lower highs form that's where you know okay it is contraction off the weekly we're potentially on the on a weekly basis heading back down to test those lows um, it's different to when the market is actually trending higher you can be a lot more confident that it's, it's making new highs on the weekly and the daily everything's working in your favor no reason why this can't go all the way up to 240 great if it does you got a good risk reward trade there fantastic actually um, but just keeping in mind what's happening so that in and on itself you know that this price section is a trade off the lows push back and it's, it could just be that secondary move like we talk about, you know, that pullback secondary move and then start building for a long. We always look at that the same on the reverse side. One, two, then roll over. Does that make sense on that one? Uh, seek, if it doesn't. <laughs> seek, I don't mind this one. Uh, the thing is it's a bit extended on the daily but but it's the weekly that's got me enthusiastic don't mind seek at all it's to be honest I don't it's the thing that's sort of a bit we'll just deal with the weekly because if you're looking at this as a pure trade if it was a daily chart there's nothing wrong with that I mean look at that you just popped out through the high obviously the problem is going to be up towards these these highs so well Right there, that might just be retesting the high. It may be, if that high low holds, then you're going to look for a trade in here on the daily basis and look for it to push up and through 18.50 because this price action is ideal to support that move. Um, it's just that you know, off the daily, we're a bit extended off the daily and we could just be washing at the previous high and then we could roll over and go bang all the way back down to that 15.50 mark and then you start looking for something to engineer that another leg up. And that's what, I mean... It could be doing that. The weekly is looking great. It's looking like this is potentially a new move up, but it hasn't really played out that way yet. Again, it's that weekly looking good, but the daily not looking so good. Although that daily doesn't look too bad at all. It's just this last recent candle, so well, let's just draw that. And it's extended to the upside. Maybe a flush out of those highs. We might get a bit of a pullback. Yeah. I like Seek on the weekly. It's just the daily that sort of got me not stumped. If I'm a bit, 
if you look at something you go oh, I don't really know you better off just to look at something else the seat doesn't look too bad on that weekly I actually do like it look at this move overextended I mean this is where you don't take into account overextended or um, underextended uh, sold hard you look at that just chopping around there for a good part of a month two months overextended you had this massive leg up which was great and I was actually looking for a sell in there somewhere. It just didn't play out. So that kept me out of the, kept the heat off, kept me out of trouble. Um, that's great, Paul. That's your RFF. Rural Funds Group. Played out nicely. Uh, AKP, Brent. We'll go through that. The dining boom, Clement. <laughs> Hi all. Get AK, how are you? BGA, we'll look at that. What have we got here? AKP. They had a cracking run up there. I've got to admit, on the on the weekly. The reason why I don't like this as much, I mean, don't forget, this is just a weekly chart. The daily could be, you know. Let me just get rid of that. You hear that, Dav? In she comes. All right. What do we got? What do we got? So this is the daily, okay? That's trending higher, but okay, it's just sort of made lower lows, lower highs, bang, up. Break the break the most anchor level on the daily. High lows, high highs on the way up. So I would rather see a, t a retest of the lows. I like to work off, say, a retest, a double bottom, whatever you like to see, for more confidence its market's heading higher. So if I just saw that, okay, what's the first thing I'd do is, is pop down to the weekly to see, i pop up to the weekly to see what's happening there. And that weekly, this looks great. I mean, I love this price section. Look at that. And you've got that acceleration, boom, straight up through 30 bucks. And then we've had this massive sell-off. So on a weekly, I don't like seeing these V-shapes as such. I'm not a big believer in V-shaped recovery. That can happen. There's no reason why. But I like to see a bit more, you know, because anyone that's been, say they bought it, someone's bought it in here, they're only coming back to break even now. You know, they were sitting on it, this is looking great, and it's come back down, turned around on them. If they bought it on this break through 23, they're only just got back into break even. So you might find that, and then the people that have bought it higher might be just waiting, going, look, I'm, I'm just trying to minimize my loss. And so they start to come in as that second wave of selling. And then we go back down and then we could potentially make a high low on a weekly basis. And then you're going down to your dailies, looking for that daily buy entry. But for me, just that sort of V shape, I'm not a big fan. I know it's a weekly and the MAs have just crossed up. I mean, like I said, there could be something fundamentally great about it. That's um, It's a great reason to buy it through here. And then if, if that's the case, then maybe the daily is not looking so bad. Um, but yeah, just that's just that weekly that's got me a bit stumped, and I think okay, if that's the case, we're actually quite into that move up. We're quite uh, further into that move up. It's not new. It's not the unknown. Potentially was through here. If you go back to that price section through here, you could have bought it through there because really you just had that pop up, pull back after breaking through those anchors levels, build a high low, another high low in here, bought it through here. You you sitting on a good little profit, but to buy it up here taking into account the weekly oh, i think it could be for me I'd, I'd rather look for something else just getting a bit late to that late to the party i guess you'd say um llc this is one we've got i think isn't it what happened there i mean trend higher look at that the weekly you've come up a, a massive that's a longer term you know high low on the monthly look at that we're starting to come out of that contraction up so it's a monthly looks good it's a bit extended but on the monthly you don't take into account so much because you know you could stay overextended just for a couple of months and bang your weekly daily are looking great weekly starting to get up there a bit but it's only up to the highs but you've got this beautiful little pullback in here and it's done a lot of work around 1650 on the weekly as well so if you go back to the daily that's this work through here and it's looking great so if you're taking that into account, I mean, that could extend, just keep extending higher. I, I'm expecting it still to go up through 1750 and start extending this leg up. I think this is just a pullback. 
until you get through that 1675, this little pullback here, I think maybe then we'll be looking for, you know, on our alert anyway, potential for it to be rolling over, but still, it's heading high, it's looking good, looking strong. What was the other one you said? L -O -S -M -S -M -N. All right. So obviously kicking it off, that's heading down. There's nothing just yet. So you can see these levels up here. I guess there's something just to quickly point out. Who are they? Structural monitoring systems. Well, it's very lowly traded too, but. All right, so the difference between you know, saying your support here and saying your anchor is here. This is where I think people could get caught. You've had this move down. You can see lower lows, lower highs. They really didn't change. Lower, lower low, lower low. When we get this pop up here, you know, on this move, that's broken this this sort of anchor zone there. So for me, this is your key level at the moment. And so we could be just doing a lot of work around that support. We're rejecting it here, potentially rejecting it here. Um, so this could just be, I'm just trying to think of how to explain it. This could just be contracting off that lows, popping up and then building. It's still, that longer term trend still could be down. All right, it's the fact that it's down near a dollar is not so bad at all. We just go back to the Yeah, look, it is, this one here, it's it's not in a bad zone. I don't mind this sort of thing. Yeah, it's had a good move higher. So you're looking at, if that's the initial leg higher, you know, higher highs, higher lows, big flush out. If this is going to be a zone for a major high low, so then you're looking for a new leg to be, this is the, 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 the beginning point or the start point for a new leg high, then you'd assume it's going to be at least trading up towards those highs at three bucks. So you can easily see there's a lot of fat in that. That's 100% gain if you bought it around now. So that's that's the plan on the weekly chart. So we're going to look for what are our levels we're going to be concerned with. And that's up towards 170. You can see that just in here. If we go back to this level, 170 or 175, I've got it. So on the weekly, why doesn't that minimize? That's a bit weird. So that's my key level on the weekly. We're starting to get a bit of rejection. We've got some rejection here on the weekly uh, down near this zone. You know, there's a few factors playing out there. Another push down to touch the dollar, and then it's popped back up, and you've just broken this minor lower high in here. We'll go back to the weekly, which is here. So really, it could be working its way up. But again, that key level for me on the weekly basis is 175. There's no reason why it can't go up. Then it turns into that sort of V-shaped recovery. If that makes sense, it's gone down, bang, straight back up on the weekly anyway. And then you might be, you just got to be concerned, but even here, we're starting to get it's just this, probably this day here, I'm not too keen about. I think this could be heading back down to $1.05 to retest it, especially after taking out these, these high lows. And don't forget, because it's in between, we could just get major consolidation between 105 and 175. Until we break up above, you know, 175, then we might, well, that's not going to play out well. If that's 175, we could just chop around in here, you know, whatever it does, washes people out starts building as everyone's like, yay and then bang straight back down again up to the highs so you can get that price action that could last for a long time and it's really just consolidating through there it's cap between there range trade between there as soon as you get that that push up then you know okay that's your first sign that we're coming out of contraction then it could easily pull back again that double leg back your anchor's there well it wasn't straight but then you want to see it it, on the daily, that's when you're going, you're drilling down to your daily, that's when you've got, okay, we are looking to potentially push out of contraction or that consolidation, or that range, and then we'll be looking for a low, uh, higher low off, off there. But like I said, if you're looking for a buy in here, it could easily be capped up at 175, and I think risk-reward way may not be so good. All right, Paul, Paul, we've got that. Clement, RFF, we'll talk about BGA. I hope that helped anyway. SMN, was that uh, Jun? Was it Jun? I hope that helped. Anyway, what's the next one we got? Uh, K. Whoop, what happened there?
Ooh. Not bad at all. If just looking at that weekly, oh, let me draw it better. That weekly, I, I hope everyone can see why I don't mind this. It's pretty clear you've got... Um, just remember, well, we'll just might have to finish it off. I've just got one other thing I wanted to... I think I want to talk about in a second. So what we've got here is price pushing down, had accelerated higher. It's come back down, and don't, this is where you get those washouts. So here you go. Great example. We wanted to look at this as a higher low. We've got that little pop-up. And so off here, we'd like to have seen a pop-up, buy it through here, targeting the highs, didn't play out. Great example of why entries are important. Um, Instead, that rolled over, fell short of this high at 675, rolled over, retested a major level at 4. So, okay, so that to me is a double bottom. It washed out that level at 4, which is, okay, so be it. We've had a good move higher. You got 1, lower high, 2, and then bang. So what we've done, the most recent price, like we just pushed up about up through 675. So the way I would be viewing this one, You've got a level here, a high low here, off a double bottom, essentially a retest fail, whatever you want to say. So the weekly is starting to look good. And you can see everything's starting to look good. All right, so what from here, because the one reason I'd be looking for that bit of a contraction and that high low to build maybe around 650 is because of it's getting a bit extended up here. And I know people look at divergence, convergence, whatever you call it, divergence on this. You know, stochastic pop up, pull back, pop up, made that weaker move higher, but it has made a higher high. Then it could easily just roll over on the longer term basis. We are on a weekly. So looking at the daily on this one, look, it doesn't, to be honest, it doesn't look too bad. It could easily just consolidate around here. The fact that it's flushed a few people out of that, you know, the previous highs way back here. You know, with this little move up here through seven, washing out this high at 675, 675 here we go through that high it could easily hold up there so the next thing you want to look at if you're looking for a buy because the daily is actually not too bad what i would be looking for on bigger because it's new you've got this little move down here don't know when that's going to finish but ideally potentially if you bought it around seven you you know where your risk is going to be and if it pushes up through seven, I would expect it to take out the highs, and especially after that breakout through 675 on a weekly basis. So you've got a major corrective action here. So that's your leg up, major correction. That's what we call complex correction. We get the lower highs, lower low. If that's the case, then you, you can sort of project this leg up, up there, and you've got a good trade on your hands, potentially. I mean, it could, it could work out that you get stopped in uh, a bit like this one below the high, retest the high, and then roll over to a deeper correction, okay? So you just gotta bear all these factors in mind. This one may go on from here, or it may have a deeper, get you in, stop you into the market, you go, okay, great, looking good, then it rolls back over, stops you out, you take a small loss, but then you gotta be prepared to potentially jump back in again, because you could easily do that price action, wash out these lows, and then start building from there, okay? So what it's just doing is putting more people on the sidelines for more fuel, wash them out of the market, for fuel to get back in again. Um, or it could just roll over from here and, and do a, a deeper correction. Does that make sense there, Kate? I guess that's... But that's where I guess you've got to view it. You've got to know what picture you're building, know what's happening, and then what you expect. And if it breaks out here, you've got a, a defined risk at 670, 660. Pushing up through 7, you could potentially buy it through there with anticipating a break up through 710. You know that the week is looking good, that it could stand higher, on you go. But just remembering too, that weekly chart starting to look a bit overextended. So there is chance that this could just flush people out, you know, a bit of a washout, then roll over and make a deeper correction and then build. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's, I think I have to call the day on the on the positions there. We've got through everything. That's good. Um, one thing I was going to look at was the, we've got an MBE. And this if everyone remembers, we've talked about around 10 cents. So actually, if you go and look at it, I just want to touch on this as a good example of around, I'm not looking for depth. Oh, it's, it's 
Unfortunately, it's a bit hard to see. But this is, if you can go and check it, just you can check it anytime in your leisure. But this is MBE was trading. We bought that at somewhere, it was alert around 7 point, 7 point six cents. And the whole idea was really that it was going to, you know, it's that 10 cent trade when things go from point, was it point oh one increments up to 10. And then they go, they start from 10, 10 and a half, 11, 11 and a half, and so on. So that the increments jump up slightly. So really, if you're just, this is where you get people playing around, you know, the bigger boys just playing around around nine six, nine seven, nine eight, on the bid, pushing it up, t- ticking it through. They can even take some off between. You know, when they match off, you can match off between, uh, was it ten point two or ten point three, um, in some other systems. I don't know what you call that to be honest. Or they can just hit the bid at ten, but you, you're getting that oscillation above and below ten. And percentage returns, it's actually quite good in the end. You, know, you can get a good little return. But they, they tend to chop that around. But, I mean, long story short, that chart still looks quite good. We've taken a partial at 10.5. Wouldn't have mind it to, just to be confirmed that it get through 10.5, but it's traded there so many times at 10.5 that, okay, that's a partial. We want to lock something in. And now we just want to see if it can extend. As soon as it trades 11, I think it's going to be often centre point trades. That's it. Thanks, Dav. So center point trades means between the bid and the offer. Some systems offer it, some systems don't. Where you can match off between the bid and the offer, but you can only do it between the bid and the offer. But that's where they can do it. If they buy it at 9.8, get out at nine, uh, 10.2. I don't know what that works in percentage terms, but oh, I won't even bother. It could be a couple of percent gain. Do that consistently. And then sooner or later, this is probably going to, you'd expect it to spike higher. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. But that's a good example of what we've discussed in the past those trades around 10 cents. All right, uh, probably enough of that, guys, but we'll finish it there. It's market's still down 52. Still um, struggling a bit, but we'll see how that goes. That's not what I want. All right. Yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, we'll be back in on, was it Thursday at 12.30 again? So, again, any questions you may have, feel free to ask them in the chat, or if you've got something that you want to email through, uh, Paul's great. He's always emailing me through things. It's great having a chat. Um, I don't mind. Send them through if a chart. If you've got a question that you're a bit, it's harder to ask on the chat, feel free to send through a chart and then, um, yeah, and ask it on the email. And then <laughs> Paul can probably tell you, uh, hopefully I'll get back to you. It may take a day or two, eh, Paul? But I'll get back to you. Um, and that way, and if you don't mind, we can actually put it in the chat later on. But also if you if something about, if you want to chat about FX, uh, we can take a look at those too. I might do a bit of that on Thursday just to have a look. I mean, when it comes down to technical analysis, it's all it's all the same. So it's always you know, good to talk about. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back in on Thursday. Have a good couple of days. Cheers. Bye.